Hello, welcome to today's uh, podcast. Daniel Dlebaratibi is my name, the author of the book Overcome Rejection, Turn Your Ghost's Dreams into Reality. Today I want to still be able to share with us uh, why we are talking about this and why it is important for us to all overcome the feeling of abandonment and the feeling of uh, rejections that we always face in our journey of life. I know because of the abandonments, because of the insults and abuses, because of the false accusations, because of starvation, the corporal punishments, harassments, isolations, you know, negative attitude towards you and never been appreciated. The best is being blamed and accused of even some things that you don't even know. Being despised, being called names, you know, all these forms of rejection, we face them in our family of origin, in our homes, in our place of work, in our, in our, in our schools, in our relationships, even in marriages. And we are seeing because of this, a lot of people have taken the wrong side of life. That's why I looked at my life and I looked at what I've been through as far as life is concerned. And when we look at the main cause of suicide of late is because of the feeling of rejections. It is because of not having a belonging. Where maybe you are staying, things are falling apart. Maybe where you are, you have been abused, you have been harassed, you know, you have been uh, poorly handled. You've never been uh, appreciated, you've never felt any love, you've never felt any care. The best you have received is abuse of all kinds. The best you have seen is domestic violence. The best you've seen is the suicide and the murder happening around. The best we have seen is people ending up with the drugs, becoming drug addicts. The best we've seen is how people have decided to live careless lives. But still there is a solution. We can still work out things. You know, because of the rejection people have faced, if you check every 40 seconds, somebody is committing suicide across the, the globe. That explains why over 800,000 people die of suicide every year. Over 800,000. Bring it to Uganda. How many people have died because of suicide just within last year and even this year? How many people have burnt themselves, set themselves ablaze because of hopelessness, because they see that there is no hope, they see that there is nothing else they can do. But I want to encourage you that there is still hope, even when things are falling apart according to what others are saying, there is still hope. Right now, as we see in very many organizations and even individual staffs, who are working, many of us have, if you haven't realized, you will see that we have now increased the medical costs, reduced productivity. We are never at work. We are always absent because of poor health. Sometimes we don't feel like going to work because we just want to remain in the, in the house because of fear, because of shame because of what we think others might say. And all of this is affecting our work. It is affecting our relationship. It is affecting our marriages. It is affecting even how we relate with our children, with our neighbors, and so on. We've seen how several people, many of us, have lost self-esteem to the extent that you don't see yourself good enough. I was there myself. I remember during my school days, even when I knew an answer, I could not raise my hand to give an answer. Why? I felt I, I wasn't good enough. 
thank God I was able to deal with it. Many times we've lost passion. The thing that we loved doing, we no longer do them. We've lost our dreams. We are now living the dreams of other people. We are now living other people's vision. We are living according to the expectation of others. Why? Because we've given up on who we are. We've lost our true identity. We now want to be like others. We now wish to be like so and so. Because we don't see anything good with us. Because of the belittling. Because of the feeling that we are actually failures now. Because of the feeling that actually there is nothing we can do. Because of the rejections we've received. Because of the abuses we've received. Because of the words different people have spoken to us. People who normally reject us give us these four words. No. Impossible. Never. Ha. All these words, we receive them on a daily basis. You want to do this? They say, tell you no. You want to do that? say, it is impossible. You, want, you, you share your dreams? They tell you, who have you ever seen that like this before? Before you know it, you will choose to live the life of other people. I remember when I wanted to get married, especially introduce and wed, I was asked, who have I seen in the village, in the entire village, that he has paid all dowry and he has wedded before? And uh, I decided that I will be the first one to do so. I will be the first one. Others were telling me, you don't have to do that. Why are you doing what you're doing? Chances are, you are where you are because of people's opinion. You are where you are because of people's expectation of who you should be, not who you really are. I remember when people were telling me, oh, oh you cannot, how can, how can you, of all people, how can you? I can tell you, the way you see yourself is the way others will treat you. If you see yourself as a dog, they will treat you as a dog. So how you treat yourself, how you, you think you are, is how others will perceive you to be. But because of the rejections we've received over and over and over, we've lost our self-esteem, we've lost our dreams, we've lost passion, we lost our vision, we are just there. But it is time for us to arise and begin to act again. We've realized that we, we end up in a state of confusion, state of bitterness, anger, and jealousy. It is the anger, it is the bitterness that destroys lives, that destroys relationships, that destroys your, your work because of anger. By the grace of God, I move a lot to the prisons those days before lockdown. I do a lot of talking with those people. I ask them, did you really commit this? Say, yeah, you know what? I committed murder, but I didn't intend. It was just out of anger. And it is true. Out of anger, you can do what you thought you can't do. Just because of anger. And many people now transfer this anger to their children, to their spouses. That explains why right now we have increased cases of domestic violence. We have increased cases of separation and divorce. Where we, we think we can no longer cope up with one another. Just even here. That explains why we have a lot of cases now rising as far as depression is concerned. There is a suicide on the rise. There is murder happening everywhere. We hear people in Masaka, we hear people where, with the panga, with the what, doing all kinds of murder. You go to the police. In fact, if you check the police report of last year, 2020, the crime rates, murder, and all those have gone across the country. Why? Because people try to prove a point, trying to work to prove a point that actually I'm also here, but it went is actually in the wrong signs and in the wrong sense. So what happens is due to the compounded effect of rejection received, 
from family, from place of work, from relationship, from marriages, and so on. Several people have built for themselves cages. People have built for themselves prison cells. Many people have been imprisoned, self-imprisoned in their own prison cells. That explains why you who is even listening to this uh, uh, podcast, you could even be among those who has told yourself that you cannot trust people anymore. You, have, you, you no longer have friends. So from home you go to work. From work you come back to your house. You've self-imprisoned yourself. So that you, you no longer have any friends. You no longer have any social support. You're on your own. You are staying lonely. Just because you want to stay on your own. But being lonely fuels depression. And being lonely from depression, it leads to suicide. I want to encourage you. Come out of your prison cell that you have put for yourself. Because of the previous experiences. You've denied yourself networks that will have helped you get out of this. And before you know it, you have also set yourself a physical prison. You, you no longer eat well in the name of not, of not having appetite. Just because of one disappointment. Guess what? Something that, that, that is meant for you. Sweating will not help. If it takes too much sweat and energy is not meant for you. Just relax. Instead of beginning to starve yourself to death, putting yourself in a prison, self-imprisoning yourself physically, you, you don't eat, you are healthy as you become something else, you are, you are working hard to only spend on your treatment, and you look back, you will not see any development, before you know it, you are back to depression, because you see yourself as a failure. Many of us now, because somebody, because a girl has told you no, because you think, because you don't have a car, because you don't have a motorcycle, because you, have done, you, you don't have a bicycle, before you know it, you go, and then it, just in case the lady marries another man, or goes for another man who has a car, you want to go and borrow and buy a, a car to prove a point. Before you know it, you are in a debt. You get yourself in a financial prison. In the name of trying to uh, prove a point, which point is baseless? Trying to do everything possible. And the saddest bit of it is, in Uganda particularly, we want to wear our money. We wear it on ourselves. So that you, we dress to impress. And before you know it, you are back to square one. That explains why, out of all of this, there's a lot of hopelessness. From work, you go home. When you, once you reach your home, you are in tears. Tears become your food, day and night. You only freshen up when, you're, when somebody comes or when you're going out. But when you are alone, tears. You are in emotional prison that you have put yourself in because of the result of the rejections. Before you know it, you get into mental prison. Even when you want to do something, you will quickly remember how things didn't work last time. Therefore, they will not work this time. Because you tried last time and it, and it, and it never worked. That is why many, many people right now, they have told themselves, I will never do this again. I will never do that again. I will never do this. I will never do that. Because of the pain of the past. Something you, you can actually get over from. Many of us, we found ourselves in a spiritual prison. Bondages. Having spiritual attacks. Because of the experiences of rejections that we've been through. But all of these, there's a solution. There's a solution. There's a solution. You're not alone. I want to assure you are not alone. And you will never be the first one. And you neither will you be the last one. So, together, let's overcome. Let's overcome. 
you can do for various reasons for various various reasons for some it is because of the physical stature for others it is the family background for others it is the poverty for others it is the color for others it is the generational uh, curse which i will call rejection just in that for example if you look at your life if your forefathers went through a similar situation chances are you go through the same if you're a lady and your mother gave birth the man left you became the daughter she became a single mother and then chances are even you if you're not very careful you get the same story single mother before you know it the grandmother was a single mother maybe before she got married then you the mother became a single uh, uh, mother before then also you get to the same story and the cycle continues personally i've also experienced the same that's why i said you're not alone what my parents went through is what i went through that's when i i woke up and say you know what enough is enough i must end this story so that it does not continue to my children spiritual you can break some of those things generational issues you can deal with them until you know the truth from where you are coming from because it is only the truth you know that will set you free and guess what you only do what you know so this book is available don't sit behind i tell people that uh, me too i was a victim of circumstance I was in a place of just lamenting until one day I checked through the Bible I discovered the book of lamentations has only five chapters only five chapters the book of lamentations but the book of acts has 28 chapters so for me I derived some wisdom it doesn't help for me to just sit down and lament on why and how things are not moving assuming that I'm not good enough wailing wandering giving excuses lamenting over everything i had to take action because the book of acts has 28 chapters that means you act more and lament less so let's get up on our feet let's get back on our feet we can overcome rejections we can overcome the feelings the bitter feelings we can we can get through all this together we can we can release the blocks that have been holding us back like unforgiveness we can release the blocks that have been holding us back the mentality of the past and then be able to move on so that we are able to break free from the bondages of the past i know rejection is very painful i know i've been there myself and uh, it is a journey that everyone walks through but the difference is how you respond to it that makes a difference if you react to it reactions give negative impacts responding to it gives you a positive outlook of life so let's get things done discover your true genius i didn't know that i am who i am now it took time for me also to discover who who i who i am it is very important for you to discover who you are but many times we sit back and then we don't know who we are i am very grateful very very grateful to imagine me africa those guys have done a very good tremendous job in my life to help me see but i had to invest in it <laughs> you know when i i remember when i told my friends in vasaka that i was going for that program which happened uh, dine and the dream it happens every year dine and the dream so uh, it is uh, conducted and organized by my my by my senior joan uh, mugenzi joan did a very exceptional work and she's still doing work through imagine me africa and this event took place in serena and people were paying 300,000 so when i told my friends that i was paying 300,000 to go and attend that event they told me you are crazy how can you walk how do you go all the way from masaka 
130 kilometers off the city. Don't you know your standard? Don't you know who you are? But I told myself I must invest in this. Thankfully, when I went there, I had to discover who I was. And it was a simple task, but very hard one. <laughs> you know, so we had to reinvent who we are. Because until you know who you are, you don't know anything. Until you know what you are meant for. Until you know what you are gifted in. Until you know what ideal, what that thing that makes you to be you. Otherwise, you will continue to wish that uh, you are like others. You will continue to wish that you are brown when you are very dark like me. You will continue to wish that I wish I was from this kind of uh, tribe when you are not from that kind of tribe. You will continue to wish, I wish I was like this. I wish I knew. I wish I did this. It is, a, it is a something that of, is of regret. And that only pushes you back to square one. This book will help you to identify who you are. To know you, who you really are. So that you are able to do what you are called to do according to your ability. According to your gifts. According to your talents. So, so that you are able to fulfill your life's purpose. And for those who have been hurt, me too have been hurt before. You've Maybe you've had one heartbreak and then you are crying. I went through not only one. Not only two, not only three, not only four, not only five, not only six, not only seven, not only eight. <laughs> I went through eight official ones. Of course, there were those that I, I, I didn't count, especially those ones who fired me before I proposed, and those who told me they would give me an answer. Till tomorrow, there's no answer. And I had to hold my peace. And now I am a married man. Chances are, you are where you are because you made a permanent statement on a temporary issue. So it is time to readjust and know, okay, what did I say? By, by the, what did I say? Because your words, your words, that's why I put it in this book, Mind Your Language. Your words can build for you a bridge or they can build for you something else. Your words can be a gate or they can be an obstacle to you. So, it's something that we can deal with. It's something that we can deal with. I want to encourage you. Rejection, we go through it on a daily basis. However, the choice to turn things upside down is on me and you. So we can. We can turn our dreams into reality. So what dreams do you have? What are those things that you, you've always wanted to do that you have never done? What are those things that you have always wanted to do but you have never done? What are those things you've always wanted to do but you've never done them? Maybe for various reasons. Help is available. Help is available. I want to encourage you. Help is available. This book is available, like I said. And its purpose is simple. Simple. This book will help you. This book will help you, one, to deal with the rejections as it is. At home, school, place of work, relationship, and marriage. Number two, this book will help you with crisis and trauma management and healing. This book will help you to work and deal with workplace challenges and relationship challenges. This book can also help you in relation to your relationship and your family. This book helps even parents so that they do positive parenting. Many of us parents we want to parent our children the way we were parented. But sadly, the way we were raised is not the way things are now. Just because you slept on a skin in your, in your days of the 19th book and agreement time, doesn't mean that right now you need to make these guys also, also to sleep on a skin. Now we have mattress. The way punishment was given then is not the way punishment is given now. 
The way discipline used to be viewed then is not the way it is now. So that we are able to be parents who can do positive parenting. Personal development. Like I said earlier, many of us have given up on life because of the experiences of the past. But that doesn't, that doesn't help us. We need to still be able to get to a place of saying, okay, this is where I am now. How can I go from here to where I, where I am supposed to be? That is how you begin to develop. That's how you begin to see things with a developmental mindset. This book also helps with the child protection. How do we protect our, our children? How do you understand that, that our children are, are actually going through crisis? So that we are able to help our children. This book also helps when it comes to gender-based violence issues. So that you are able to understand, okay, this is how it is supposed to actually be handled. You can use this book for career development. Like I, I, I told you, just because you wanted to do a course and then they told you no, doesn't mean that right now you can't do that course. You can. And finally, it is a tool, a book, a tool you can use when it comes to addictions and the rehabilitations. Maybe you, uh, you have somebody or you know somebody or maybe you are going through a crisis and you really want to get out of the addictions. Maybe it could be drugs. It could be maybe alcohol. It could be any other addictions that you are struggling with because of the pains of being abandoned, because of the pains of being unwanted, because of the pains of being isolated, because of the pains of being thrown out. You ended up with the drugs, or you, you, you ended up becoming an addict of alcohol, or whatever. This book will help. And please feel free to reach out so that we together can be able to help you. Together, we can be able to get positive ways of dealing with this. So that you need to understand you are not alone. All of us, we go through this. Me too, I went through this. And I'm glad I went through this 30 years back, uh, 20 years back. 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 1 year ago, but it makes us stronger. And if I made it the way I am, the way you know me, if I can make it, you can actually do better. If others have had to overcome rejection and turn their dreams into reality, even you too, you can. I want to encourage you, yes, you can. Don't kill yourself. Don't commit suicide. Don't give up on your life. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on your passion. Don't give up on your calling. Don't give up at your place of work. Many people have chosen to resign just because of the pressure. But there is a way out. Together, we can overcome rejection. Together, we can move to where we're supposed to be. Together, things are possible. Don't give up on life. Don't give up. Together, let's overcome rejection and turn our closest dreams into reality. God bless you.